Welcome back to Destroy Amps. Today is uh, all for the beginners. I know how frustrating it is. You really want to be cool, like me. You buy a Fender Jaguar or a Fender Jazzmaster. It's delivered to your house. You pick it up, similar to this. You pick it up and you go, that sounds beautiful. And then your bridge collapses and it goes out of tune and you realize that your action's ridiculously high and you get sad, frustrated. You go straight on the internet. What is wrong with my bridge? You'll get a million suggestions. Change the bridge out. The bridge is garbage. I'm here to help. <laughs> At least I'm gonna to try to. Um, the Jaguar, bridge um, has a learning curve uh, and a lot of people don't make it they jump straight to a, a better option and uh, I want this video to be about um, guiding you through how to set up your guitar um, every guitar is going to be different so I'm just going to give you some basics um, to help you through and the more you play with the guitar uh, an experiment you'll find something that uh, you want to play all the time and perhaps you don't want to spend money on a new bridge or anything like that maybe you want to spend your money on new pickups or a new pedal or something like that so if I can help that's what this video is about I have in this bag a offset guitar bridge fresh from China, I would imagine. Largely, it's exactly the same as what you're gonna have on your guitar. The bridge posts and the, the grub screws that come out of the posts, they set your overall height. And then on your saddles, you have more grub screws that set the height of each individual saddle. Now why is that important? Um, originally the Jaguar came with a seven and a half inch radius uh, fretboard. What does that mean? Well a fretboard uh, has a certain curvature to it and the radius is just how curved that is. The lower the number the more curved it is. So uh, some of the newer um, offset guitars they come with a nine and a half inch radius uh, fretboard but with the adjustment available on the bridge you can set your bridge to match the curve or the radius of your fretboard some offset guitars will come with what looks more like a mustang bridge which doesn't have any adjustment in the saddles hopefully that will be matched already to the radius of your neck Usually when these, guitar come, these guitars come straight from the factory, they come with uh, nine gauge strings. Um, the bridge is usually sitting on the pickguard. There is little to no shim involved in the neck pocket. We'll get to that in a bit. When your bridge is low um, and your string gauge is small, there's not much downward force applied in this area. And this area is quite important to an offset guitar. Um, originally they were designed, uh, the Jazzmaster, as, as the name suggests, um, to coerce the jazz guitar players over Defender who'd been playing you know, arch tops and things like that. And if you look at arch top guitars, the bridge is generally sitting quite high. Um, and that, so that was a design feature that Fender went for to try and pull those guitarists in. And that's been lost over the years. Without that heightened bridge, there's not enough pressure in this area um, and your strings will slip out the saddles. Um, the, the bridge will be all loose and wonky. Um, and overall, you just won't have a great playing experience. On top of all of that, um, quite often these bridges come from the factory with not the best fitting uh, components. Any vibrations 
uh, in the guitar will slowly but surely make all of these pieces um, collapse basically and that's where you get the bridge collapsing. If you've got a, a Fender Jaguar or a Fender Jazzmaster um, at some point when it wasn't set up correctly your bridge will have collapsed. I've I've done it myself years and years ago. I've played other people's guitars and I've made their bridges collapse. I don't have that problem now. When you're setting up these bridges, um, you need a little bit of Loctite. The Loctite blue, not the red. Um, the Loctite blue will just give enough firmness that all these individual components will not rattle loose. I've found once you get the Loctite blue in there, it's, it's not a problem. So we were talking about radius. You're going to want to, before you, you know, put your bridge into the guitar, you want to set up your radius so it matches the guitar. Now, you can buy radius gauges and, and the like, but I've never really used them. Um, I just go by, like, eye it up, really. So I'll get my bridge next to um, the neck, and I'll adjust... The, the saddles until they sort of match the, the fretboard and we can adjust that later. So you slot that, next step is slot that bridge into the, uh, the uh, bridge holes um, and you want to set the height reasonably high. Um, I, I'm not going to go through setting up the mute in this video because I have another video on setting up the mute. And let's face it, most people don't use them anyway. So you want to set your bridge height um, so the, the, there's enough of a, a back angle on your um, back towards the tremolo or the vibrato, as we should call it. Um, and you want to get that height so that um, the strings at the back of the, the vibrato clear the screws that connect the uh, the trim together. That's where you want your height. If you were setting your mute, where the mute works really well is generally the height you want to be. Uh, so that's that's where that height of that bridge wants to be. Then when it comes to saddles themselves, you may need to do some more adjustment because behind the bridge, uh, where the, the saddle screws sit um, quite often when you have that um, back angle behind the bridge the the strings can hit the back of the bridge and then you'll get uh, rubbing where you don't want it the uh, sound behind the bridge won't sound right so you can then further adjust uh, your saddles to make sure that your strings clear the uh, the saddle adjustment. Get your height right. You've already sort of radius the bridge. You can adjust the saddles a little bit more just to make sure um, that your strings aren't hitting anything. Your strings are not hitting the back of the trem screws. Um, if you find that on some of your more modern reissues of, of Jags and Jazzmasters, the screws are a little bit higher um, than they were on vintage instruments. So you might find, like I had to on this one, that turning the screw upside down on the vibrato will help uh, clear that because what you don't want is your strings um, rubbing on the screws behind the uh, bridge. While we're talking about strings, like I say, usually these offset guitars come with nines, uh, sometimes tens. Um, when the Jazzmaster and the Jaguar were first built, uh, the only strings that you could really get, and certainly the strings that came from the factory, were, were a lot heavier gauge than 9s and 10s. Um, I have previously, in a previous life, had that guitar set up with 10s um, with no problems. But, you know, don't like to brag. I would recommend, um, certainly with the Jag, I would start at 11s if I were you. Um, you will find the tension of 11s on a short scale guitar 
to be not that different from nines and tens. Bigger the gauge, the more tension, the more pressure on that bridge that's going to keep it stable. Uh, that guitar has 13s um, and this one has 12s. Um, but like I say, I would start with 11s. Just see how you enjoy those. You've pulled your bridge up high. You've got your saddle sort of where you want them. Um, you will then go to the neck and you will be shocked because <laughs> your, your action will be ridiculous. It will be ridiculous. Your action will be so far off the fretboard down here that you'll go, what's that guy on the internet talking about? I can't have my bridge that high up. My action's awful. I can't play the guitar at the best of th at times, you know, but when, no, don't worry. This is where shims come into it. Raising the bridge and shims are the two most important things um, for any offset guitar. Now, what is a shim? If you're a total beginner, you might not know, and that's fine. So a shim is basically something that is put in the neck pocket right at the bottom. So where, where the neck sat there, that is where the shim goes, okay? So if you're looking from the back, the shim sits um, sort of right where the bottom screws are of the guitar. Um, what sort of size shim you need will depend on the guitar. It will depend on how high you've pulled the bridge up, whether you've got a mute installed. I can't tell you to go and get a shim of a certain size and you'll be fine. In America, you're very lucky. You have Stumac, you can buy full neck um, shims, but over in, in the UK, they're just too expensive to, to make sense, really. Um, you can buy uh, some metal shims uh, if you wanted to. Um, you could uh, cut up an old card uh, if you wanted to, or you could just use some cardboard from like um, like a top trump card or uh, some cereal packet card, you know, something of, of some substance. Cut it to the, the basic shape um, of the, the bottom of the neck pocket, put it in, put the neck back together, uh, the neck and the, the guitar body back together uh, and see where your action is. You might put one bit of shim in and go, that's still too high. It's easy, it's a ball ache, but you've got to take the neck off again and put another shim in. Um, unless you've got one of those uh, neck adjustment things that come on the Ampros. So just put a bit more shim in. Basically what you're trying to do with your neck is instead of having it flat in the body, you're arching it that way um, which allows the strings, once they head over the bridge, they sort of, it levels up the neck across the board. So if that neck was flat against the body, yeah, we'd have good action at the nut, but you'd have high action here. Whereas because my neck is, I'm exaggerating, but it's angled like this, um, the strings can pass over the neck the same height from the, the frets all the way along the neck. You've shimmed your, your neck and you're, you're happy with where the action is. Now, particularly if you've got a, a vintage spec radius, seven and a half, you may find that fretting down here, once you've got your action right, could find is that when you're, when you're doing bends and things like that, that uh, you buzz and, and fret out and stuff. Um, so that's where you need to go back to your bridge and your saddles and you adjust slightly. Now, you've kind of got the radius on your saddles already, but what you'll find is when you're actually adjusting them, you'll find the radius perfect um, because it won't buzz anymore once you've got it to the right height. Okay, so it's a little bit of back and forth and I wouldn't expect um, someone learning to set up an offset guitar to get it right straight away. Spend a couple of days over it just to, you know, get it right. You've got bridge height correct. Your strings aren't hitting your screws at the back of the trim. Your strings aren't hitting the screws from your saddle adjustments. You've got your um, radius all dialed in. Um, your um, action's perfect. But you might still hear a buzz somewhere, okay? And that might still be coming from the bridge. 
On some of the newer saddle adjustment screws, they're just a little bit too long for the angle that you need. Um, so don't worry about it, but what you can do is just get a little file, pull the string off and just file that screw down so it's flat, uh, so it's less tall, so it's not hitting the string. Okay. Um, on older instruments, the, the uh, saddle adjustment screws are shorter, so you can get away with it. Whilst you've got your file out, what you might find, even though your bridge is high and there's lots of tension um, and everything else is good, the low E might still skip out of the saddle. And that's just because some of these um, saddles just they're just not quite deep enough so a little bit of just file a little groove in and that will serve to keep your string in place it only needs to be a fraction if at all it doesn't have to happen every time just i have had to do it in the past it's then basically the same setup that you would do on any other guitar so you want to try and adjust the truss rod okay so your action is good here your action is good here, but in the middle, you've got a, a, a bow um, that is either making your um, strings quite hard to push down in this area. So on the, the squires like this one, the adjustments up at the top, um, on vintage ones, the adjustments down the bottom. Um, you only want to adjust a little bit at a time and you want it not to be perfectly straight, you want a little bit of curve in there, but just so it's comfortable all over the neck. And you may find that once you've adjusted the uh, the truss rod, that you need to go back to the bridge or the shame and, and fart around a bit more. It's a long process. And then you want to adjust your intonation with the, the saddles. Um, so you want, if you've got an E uh, open, you want an E on the 12th fret as well. Um, and moving the, the saddle backwards and forwards will give you that. And again, once you've moved the saddles, um, you may find that you need to adjust things again for height or you may be getting some buzz on the screws. It's not over yet. <laughs> so, I would probably take a, a, you know, have a breather after you've done that, um, all of that work. You've then, you've got the pickups to adjust because your height will have changed. So you may need to bring them closer to the strings. That's not really a big deal. The vibrato, um, I don't think many people set these up the way God intended. <laughs> I hope I didn't offend anyone there. Not bothered to be honest. You adjust the vibrato um, by loosening or tightening that screw there um, and that will uh, give you more or less tension on the spring for when you're actuating the, the uh, vibrato arm. If I have a lock on the vibrato, I use the lock. Um, it's a it's a cool idea. Basically, the idea of the lock is you're playing, uh, you've got a floating vibrato. If you snap a string, everything goes out of tune. The clever design with this is if you set it up correctly, if you snap a string, you just slide the lock in place, and you're back in tune. Okay. So how do you set up the lock? Well, what you need to do is tune up to pitch and then you'll see whether the lock can actually slide if it can't you need to um, lower the, the plate underneath with the screw to the point where that can slide in but then you'll need to retune the guitar up to pitch try and get it in again you might find that you've gone too far or not enough Basically, what you want to get to the point of is when you, now this guitar might not be in tune, we'll see. So when you're in tune, try and, try and listen. Let me 
cast slightly out of tune. But basically what you want to do is be pushing that into there and the pitch doesn't change. And when it's pushed into the lock position, you have no upward movement on your vibrato arm. I hope I'm making sense there. So you tune it up, you adjust this saddle, you adjust this screw um, until you can slide the lock into place without any um, friction. And then once it's in place and you're still in pitch, um, you have no upward movement. And that will mean that when you go out of tune for you know your snapper string or if you do a drop D tuning, if you put your lock in, that will keep everything um, in tune, basically. Oh, Luby and Nutter. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you're putting thicker strings on, you might need to file out the nut a little bit and lube it up. Um, either using graphite pencil or uh, lip balm is a good lubricant. I missed the most important thing. So much to cover. So, <laughs> the bridge is designed to rock with vibrato use, okay? It doesn't move a lot, but it does move. The idea behind it was to reduce friction uh, anywhere across the guitar. So obviously if the bridge is moving with the slackening of the strings or the, uh, the tightening of the strings, um, there's no friction there. So you're not going to snap strings, you're not going to go out of tune. Um, if your bridge is set up correctly, when you activate your vibrato, the bridge should move and then it should spring back to where it needs to be. It should never not move back to where it should be, okay? Um, the one caveat to that is what I found with this guitar, not so much on this one, is I play kind of with my hand stuck in this position. And I do sometimes push the bridge forward, but that's my sloppy playing technique. You won't do that because you're better than me. Um, but the actual actuating of the vibrato should not cause the bridge to not move back to its original position. If it does, go through this video again <laughs> and you might have missed something. A lot of people tape their bridges to stop them moving. If you're going to do that, God bless, but lubricate your bridge if you're going to do it. All right, or angels will die. All right. So I think I've covered everything. I think I have. I, it's a really difficult subject to put into one video. Um, but hopefully I've given you the confidence that if this idiot can set up his guitars, then you should be able to. That's my hope. Um, like I say, if you have any questions, just either stick them down below or message me on Instagram um, or head over to shortscale.org and you'll find me there um, and I'll be happy to be more long-winded in how I help, hopefully. If you like this video, subscribe. Do a kung fu kick into the uh, bell and like it um, and share it as well. If someone, you know, if someone's on a forum saying, they don't know how to sell their guitar before everyone jumps in and says you know buy a mastery um link them this video and you might just save them a few quid um you might not it might be a waste of time it often is but yeah we can't all be we can't all follow the righteous path okay See you next time on Destroying Amps. You ungrateful. <laughs>